right, so this one I like a lot. Uh, so it takes some creative thinking though. And so let's say we got a pendulum uh, type um, at rest. Okay, so it starts from rest, take it as uh, 60 degrees uh, from the vertical. Okay. Derive an expression for the speed of the sphere, uh, sphere when it is at uh, point B. Right, so point B is at the bottom, looks like. Okay. Uh, at the bottom of the um, circular path. Okay. So, um, so since we got a short day, let's do it this way. I'm going to flip my screen over and we'll just uh, put the answers as we go along here. Okay, so um, yeah, you guys have seen plenty of pendulums. So you guys know you're going to do conservation of energy. Um, height difference. So, okay, now R over two. Guys, how do they get that there's a height change of R over two? You had to play a, what, what is cosine of 60 degrees? One half. You had to figure that out. You guys see, they give you start 60 degrees from the vertical. Cosine of 60 degrees is one half. So R minus half R is the other one half R. Okay. At one point for solving equation for the speed of the bottom. Okay, so it should be square root 2gh. Let's see if they got that. Um, okay, yeah, so square root 2gh, but h was equal to r over 2. So the, the 2 and the 1 half cancel. So yeah, square root gr, right, in terms of the radius of the circle, because the height change was r over 2, right? Now, that actually, that's assuming, I'm sorry they did a stick. Um, okay, I think it's related, though. They, they should have said the stick had negligible math. That would have been a nice uh, detail, because that would really only be true for that case. Okay. So let's say the stick has negligible mass and all the masses in the bottom. Okay. You guys could do that conservation of energy, right? So MGH turns into one half mv squared. The height is r over two, the height changes. Okay. All right. So flip back over here. Okay. So uh, just to make sure you guys are following. If you cut this, make a triangle right here. You guys see that this is gonna be r over two and that's gonna be r over two, right? This is r over two. That's the r over two we care about. It's cosine 60 degrees is half of this. This is r. Right? Get that? Okay. Um, part B, an external force is exerted on the sphere to uh, speed it up. After the force is removed, the sphere has enough speed to move in a complete circle, as shown in figure three. The angle theta is equal to uh, zero in the sphere at the point B and 180 degrees at the top, point T, okay, just like they show there. Um, on the axes shown, sketch the possible graph of potential energy of the sphere Earth system as a function of theta. Label that graph U. So we'll start with, start with that. Okay. Uh, I think the reason they gave a stick instead of a string is because the stick is rigid. So it can go around like to the, the, min, the minimum speed should be uh, approaching zero meters per second at the top. Right. Versus if they had a string, you guys know from your the quiz you guys just did, the minimum speed would be uh, square root of GR. Isn't that? But for, for a stick, it could just like go, go, go right. Okay. So it's got some, some rigidity. But we're looking at potential energy. So guys, potential energy, that's MGH, right? MGH. And H can go all the way up to 2R. Right? And this height, uh, if, if you're following it around, remember, um, it should follow some kind of sine or cosine function, shouldn't it? Right? Because uh, at first, it builds up height really slowly. And then in this section, it builds up height really quickly. And then it builds up height really slowly at the top because it's mostly moving laterally, right? Top to bottom, okay? So I think it's going to follow some looks uh, kind of like a sine curve, right? Again, uh, moving this uh, head a little bit fast here just to save us a minute. All right, part B, I, um, okay. Oh, let's just look at this, All right? Cut straight to the answer. Yeah, so at the bottom, it has zero potential energy. When it does a full 360 degree circle, it also has zero potential energy. In the middle, it does look like, um, like semi-soidal, doesn't it? Right, that should be like part of the sine or cosine curve, right? Which are the same shape, just should be great. Part double I on the same axis, sketch graph of kinetic energy and label that K. Um, the fact that now that, that one's trickier to figure out, but the way you figure it out is by doing potential energy first. That's why they ask for potential energy first, right? Because that's just related to the height. Right? Uh, and then you say, since the energy is conserved for the uh, for the mass Earth system. These two have to add up to some total value. It looks like the total value in this case they just went to the top, right? Uh, now, do they have to like overlap something like this? Uh, I don't think that matters specifically. But what does matter is they add up to the same total value. So this plus this adds up to this. Okay. This plus this adds up to this. 
So it looks like it, it's always six units tall, right? Like two plus four units, six units. Any particular location, if you add them up, they add adds up to six units. You guys see that? That's how you figure that out. So energy is conserved. You figure out potential energy first. Say, well, kinetic must be total minus the potential, right? Okay, next part. Um, ooh, sorry. Here, we got you. Uh, when the sphere makes a complete revolution, it does it spend more time in the top half or the bottom half of the circle? Uh, you guys tell me real fast, top half or bottom half, where does it spend more time? The top, because it's going slower around the top. Around the bottom, it's whizzing real fast. So it's got to spend more time on the top. Uh, so, okay, there you go, correct answer, top half. Okay. So yeah, I, th I think we made the most of that because we got about a minute left. Um, so you guys keep that just for you guys. Uh, turn in that quarter page and yeah, uh, I will see you guys on Monday and yeah, more review. Uh, yeah.